you know, I don't like the the NSBM kind of uh, white supremacist message that some black metal bands have, but I also don't like communists because I think it's anti it's anti individualistic, which is what black metal is to me. Bresnik's and welcome back to the Bresnik's cast episode number 54 already can you believe it and we are going back to talking to about some black metal on the show because it's been a few shows now and you know how we feel about black metal on this show so joining me to talk about some black metal is Ashakawati and he is the man behind the one man Californian black metal band Black Sigil. Um, black Sigil, raw, kind of underground, you know, like a lot of the stuff in this show. But I, I really think you'll dig their stuff, man. Well, his stuff, you know. And um, quite an interesting conversation as well, and one I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So just before we get to it, let's hear some Black Sigil. So this is Haunting Darkness.
So I am here with a Sheikha Watley, who is the man behind Black Sigil. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, thanks for having me on, man. Um, I've never done this before, so if I mess up, that's why. Uh, so uh, I, n- I never thought I would do anything like this, so it's exciting. I don't worry about it, man. I mess up all the time. I talk a lot of nonsense. That's what the editing process is for. That's why we don't do it live. But uh-huh. first, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and how you started Black Sigil? Well, uh, I started Black Sigil probably in 2014. I was still in high school at the time. Um, and then I recorded multiple songs for about like a year into 2015. And then I just kind of sat on the first demo for a while. And then eventually I just decided to release it. And since then I've been making music under that title. And as for myself, um, right now I'm just going to university and hopefully I'll be done with that in a year or two. And that's pretty much all I have going on, just that and making music. So where did you get the Ashaka Watley name from? Uh, That's sort of my alter ego. Um, A lot of people in the black metal community have like an alter ego kind of name. Mm. And I just wanted my name to kind of reflect um, the culture that I come from, which is uh, from Mexico. And I just wanted the name to kind of reflect like my sort of background into something that was sort of unique to myself. See, that's something I always kind of like about black metal because I'm a really big black metal fan. And it's always like, I was talking, who who was that? I can't even remember. I was talking on the show with someone very recently about this, actually, about how it's interesting how you can listen to black metal from all over the world and it's always a little bit different. It's the same, but it's always a little bit different. There's always just a little something there's always a regional flavor to it if you know what i mean that says yeah. that, that makes it all, every kind of black metal scene a little bit different it's always something i've kind of liked about it yeah i think uh i think i was actually listening to that podcast i think it was abandoned by abandoned by light or something like that could be could be but yeah i totally agree um like i remember you guys were talking about how that you have your sort of elitists in the black metal scene. Uh, yes. And, like, ultimately, I think that that is no good because, like, you wouldn't get so many bands if people just stuck to the same formula the same the same way. And in a way, I think that also reflects, like, what black metal is about. It's about being an individual and setting your own path. And when people expect you to kind of conform to the same formula as Mayhem or Dark Throne, I don't know, I just, I don't think that really fits with the whole black metal idea. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, neither of us are, like, Norwegian guys like them. That's, you know, their own thing. You know what I mean? That's the, and just because it started, just because, like, that's the thing. I think the elitist thing is not as big as it used to be because, I don't think anyone really cares anymore, and because black metal, I think, has expanded out as well, you know, like, there is still kind of, like, raw old-school black metal and stuff, but there's so much more out there, you know, there's black gaze and atmospheric black metal, and there's all this kind of stuff now, so I think it's become bigger than just the Norwegian scene. Yeah, definitely. Like, I personally haven't met anyone who's still saying that the Norwegian thing is the only the only real thing in real life anyway. I don't think I don't think anyone's really that bothered anymore apart from the the probably is some of the old church burners about but I don't Oh yeah, know. maybe the original church burners. <laughs> there probably wasn't that long ago, they're probably about somewhere. Um but yeah, um no it's interesting. So you're from um California, is that right? Yep. So what uh, what is like is black metal big there? Like, because I don't really have much of a conception of what what it's like over there. I don't really think it's big over here. Um, I mean, the big kind of music town is Los Angeles, 
And I don't really see black metal bands play there very often, at least local bands. Um, I remember Mayhem uh, toured in Los Angeles a couple of years ago. But in terms of local bands and the local scene over here, there's not really that many black metal bands. Probably not that kind of place, if you think about it. It's, I always kind yeah. of like envision black metal as being a very cool type of music. And, you know, I think it'd be a bit warm for it. <laughs> it'd be a bit <laughs> warm for all the face paint. Um, is there anything, here's an interesting question. Is there anything kind of else like, say, maybe if you see American metal bands that you've noticed kind of differently? Because I'll give you an example, because I, I've talked to a lot of the British black metal bands. And uh -huh. one of the major differences if we're not talking musically, if we're just talking aesthetically, is like a lot of the British bands either don't wear any corpse paint at all, or maybe if the, you're the Infernal Sea, they wear those scary plague masks. But like uh -huh. they don't really do the corpse paint sort of thing for for whatever reason. It's just some bands do, but it's not really much of a thing. Is there anything you would say, like observing like American black metal bands, you would say that's kind of, kind of different and unique, like, kind of like that? Um... I really haven't noticed a trend. Everybody just kind of does their own thing. Like, uh, Wolohan, they, I believe they wear black metal face paint, corpse paint. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really see a trend. And if there was a sort of thing that set the American me black metal bands apart, uh, I kind of wouldn't want to be a part of it. I just want to do my own thing, even if it's against everything else. Mm. So, I was listening to some of your music, obviously, <laughs> and I was listening uh -huh. to, um, I assume it's Demo 1 and not I, obviously, um, and I think what's interesting about that is you do put in some different stuff in that, you know, like it's not, there are, a lot of it is just like really kind of raw black metal, but then you do, you do kind of take it down and stuff like that and you do, you know, you throw in some different influence there, so tell us a bit about it. Okay, so on demo one, like I was really still sort of experimenting on what my style is and what I would like to write. And so, like, a lot of that, a lot of it was influenced by, like, Burzum, Bathory type stuff. And, like, occasionally, like, uh, they would do acoustic things, sound kind of atmospheric. And I also wanted to incorporate that in my stuff. So that's why there's, like, a couple of kind of acoustic tracks on Demo 1. And also, uh, I believe there's also an organ track on there. And that was influenced by Satanic War Master. Um, I forget what album it is, but it's towards the end of an album where they play like this sort of organ type thing. And I also wanted to incorporate that in because I thought it was pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. And uh, it is really quite one of those things where it's quite raw. Did you record it yourself? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually think this was a recorded in GarageBand. Uh, like, at the time, I didn't have anything sort of uh, sophisticated or anything like that. So you can get away with that in black metal because, like, you know, some people, I've mentioned this loads of times the show, but some people, like, they hate home recording because they say, like, you know, it degrades the quality of the music and all that. But for me, it's really genre dependent, you know. I mean, if you're, <laughs> people accuse black metal fans of worshipping shitty production all the time. So oh, I think yeah. if, you know, <laughs> if it's a bit more rough around the edges, you can totally get away with it, especially in black metal. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I think it's also a meme because, you know, I saw this meme where it was uh, Nokia, like these shitty Nokia phones were on sale at Walmart and then they just showed a picture of someone in corpse paint, like their eyes, like <laughs> light beams. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think with home recorded stuff, you get, you get more, like I would say a genuine kind of music feel to it because, you know, it's not as... Not as produced as like, you know, a studio kind of thing. And I think that is just a more real experience into like a person's songwriting abilities and like what they want to write 
and their feelings they want to get across. I just feel it's more genuine. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. And let's talk about Haunted Darkness because this is like obviously the kind of most recent thing you've released and it's from an album, The Blackest Dark, that's coming up. So tell us about this new album. All right, so it's been like a couple of years since I've really put out like a full length or anything. And Haunting Darkness is the first one, the first track that I put out that's going to be on that album. And it actually it actually came about because uh one of my friends and I wanted to put out like a split, like he's he's really into hardcore, hardcore punk type music. And you know, we're friends. We've been friends for a long time. And but our influences are pretty pretty uh different. So we wanted to put out a split that was sort of like a black metal hardcore split. Um but uh it's actually pretty funny because we planned the split like more than a year ago and it's just a one it was just like a one song split. And uh like I was the only one that finished I guess the one song. <laughs> So uh, we kind of had to stop the whole split idea because, uh, I don't know, you just never finished uh, his song in a year. So, <laughs> so that's kind of how time. it came about. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> that's kind of how he is, though. Um, but this track was recorded at his house. He has a lot, he has a lot bigger setup than I do. He has, like, an actual, like, amp and cab and stuff. So that's why the production is like a little bit better on this one. But um, I think the rest of it is just going to be like in my own home studio kind of thing. Mm, so like, are you are you kind of like, are you just at the, at the start of that process just now? Uh, yeah, I have, I have a few songs already recorded. And um, I need to record the drums, which is like the biggest pain in the ass for me. Just because... Uh, I'm not really used to programming the sort of drums that I want. Like the drums that I usually come up with are pretty monotonous. But um, yeah, I would, say, I would say that the new album is about like 50% done. Excellent. I think that will be out next year. Yeah, or whenever it comes out. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm sort of a lazy fuck sometimes. So yeah. it just depends on when I feel like it. Yeah, it'll be out when it's out. It's done when it's done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I kind of put deadlines out. Yeah, they uh, kind of came and went. Um, just whenever, whenever I get to it, really. <laughs> Don't expect anything. Just whenever it comes. Fair enough. Fair enough. And what's with all the upside down hammer and sickles? <laughs> oh, okay. Um. So basically, that whole thing is. It's an anti-communist symbol because I believe, like, you know, I don't like the the NSBM kind of uh, white supremacist message that some black metal bands have, but I also don't like communists because I think it's anti it's anti-individualistic, which is what black metal is to me. So. You know, I kind of put that out to sort of signify, like, you know, um, I don't like communism, pretty much. And, like, a lot of people kind of confuse that symbol with being a communist. Like, the other day, some guy sent me a message saying, like, oh, are you red, anarchist, black metal? And I said, no, it's it's an anti-communist symbol that I came up with, so... Mm, that's actually um, quite interesting because I'm I'm no fan of communism or white supremacy or any of that shit either. I'm the same as you. I'm more kind of individualistic, and uh, that's something that's it's true. I mean, like because black metal really is quite an individualistic genre. I mean, it's one of those genres where you know, like there is some bands, but a lot of people just do it themselves. It's it's one of those things, and you know, anything like that, whether it's you know something like. 
you know, national socialism or communism. It's all uh, it's, it's all collectivism, and you know, and under yeah. regimes like that, people like us don't tend to do very well. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in those regi- regimes, it's all about the the group, and if you're not part of that group, then you're sort of, you know, dealt with. And that's the thing. They also stifle creativity as well. I mean, the songs are all crap. You know, every time you hear any of those kind of thing, it's a. It's a, although what's interesting is someone I've not looked too much into this, but someone told me that in the Soviet Union in the early days they had like workers playing like pipes and things like this um, it was supposed to be like a kind of worker symphony and it was ended up being oddly enough a precursor to industrial music don't quote me on being that is true but someone told me that once which is weird oh that sounds pretty interesting I have to look that one up man yeah I'll actually have to look it up and see, see if it's actually true as well because <laughs> I don't know if it is or not but it would be weird that you know it would be the last thing you'd expect but um, I that's the thing. That's why like the sort of national socialist black metal thing. I mean, I don't really know anyone that listens to that kind of thing either. To be honest, you know. Yeah. Um, there was the whole, if you remember, there was the whole controversy with Taki. You know, when he was, oh, yeah. if anyone mm-hmm. doesn't know, I'll explain for the audience. Um, he years ago, I think it was like ten years ago or more, ten, more than that. He appeared in Germany with a swastika drawn on his chest, and then he got protested everywhere he went, absolutely everywhere he went on that last tour, and they had to cancel it. Um, I, and I think it was in poor, poor taste. I think poor taste isn't a strong enough terms, but to be fair, I don't think he's a Nazi. Yeah, like I kind of feel like he did it just to just for shock. Um, I remember that Antifa did go nuts with that, like a whole bunch of people, um, you know, basically tried to get rid of them from any sort of venue that they would play at. Um, but I mean, for me, uh, it doesn't really matter to me whether someone listens to it or not. You know, I, I believe that somebody can listen to NSBM for the music itself rather than the message. I think the message can be separated from the music um but me personally i don't i don't really listen to it yeah i'm i'm kind of the same i don't really i don't really listen to it either and i really have um but um, one thing i should have mentioned um on the the haunting darkness i'm looking at the artwork because i've i've got the computer open in front of me um is that supposed uh, is that lucifer falling from heaven <clears throat> yes, it is. It's uh, artwork, uh, I think, from the Divine Comedy, uh, made by Gustav uh, Dore, I think you pronounce it. But yeah, that is uh, Lucifer falling from heaven. Um, again, an individual, you can say. You could kind say of a theme. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I've actually, I don't. Have you ever read the Divine Comedy? Uh, no, it's too fucking long. I can't. I can't get through that shit. <laughs> I was going to say I've read the first, but I've read the Inferno. Um, but the problem is you've got like it's like all that thing where you've got like two sides of every page, or one of them is like what he wrote, and then the other side is what he actually meant. And you know, then it takes forever because you know you read that and you kind of understand, and then you have to get it explained to you. It's like how you have to read Shakespeare books because it claims that that's English, but it's not any English yeah. that I would recognize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, I tried, I tried listening to it on an audiobook, and even still, that that shit was like hours long, and I just can't devote that much time to to a book right now. I know, that's the thing. Um, so I suppose we're coming up towards the, the sort of end of the show. Is there anything else that's coming up, anything you're doing that we should talk about? Um, I mean, I'd say the the biggest thing that's going to come out is the Blackest Dark album. Like I said, I don't know when it's going to come out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the only th- the big thing that's that's being worked on at the moment. Mm, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed the conversation. All right, thanks for having me, man. 
So my thanks again to Shaka Watley for coming on the show. My apologies for, <laughs> you know, what I'm, what I'm sure is getting the pronunciation of that name horrifically wrong, but these things happen. I'm from Scotland, that's my excuse. Anyway, I thought that was a good show. We got into a lot of different stuff and, you know, we'll definitely have actuality. Uh, I'm not even going to try and say it again. You'll be back on in the future then, <laughs> should you want to, obviously. So, that is it for another show. Thanks for listening. The website, bresnicks.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Vladimir Bresnicks. And don't forget that I have an album out too. You can find it on all your favourite digital streaming platforms. Just search Vladimir Bresnik's and you will find my album. And I would say, (laughs) try and make it through the entirety of the first song. And if you can and you like it, then you'll probably like the rest of it. If you can't, it's probably not for you. I'm just being honest. So anyway, let's finish with some more Black Sigil. Of course, what else? So this is my unholy queen. <laughs> 